I had to learn some hard lessons coming in. Like this, I, I transitioned to game audio from doing tech work and live sound and, and recording, and it, it really I wasn't a gamer when I started, and so I, it wasn't an easy transition for me. So I had to learn that a lot of my skills in audio, while sort of applicable, there was a whole other set of skills that I wasn't aware of. I, I want to throw out a th few things. If you're applying for a sound design job, if you're applying for any job, tailor your resume to that job. Don't list things that are way out. I mean, one thing that is maybe funny is like, oh yeah, they were a clown in the fair one year. It's just some comical thing. That's fine, but the bulk of your resume should be tailored to the job you're applying for. So if I, I've got a job that's a sound design posting and I'm getting a lot of composer resumes and I, I'm not looking for a composer right now. But if you're applying for a job at a place like where I work, where we make a, a fantasy game, MMO, lots of magic, lots of dragons, and I have sound design posting, you know, think about what you're presenting to me as the hiring manager and why I would want to talk to you about potentially working with us. And if the entirety of your resume consists of, you know, recording music, um, maybe you, you should do some indie stuff before you come and, I mean, I'll do an information interview. I, I'm happy to talk to people that are trying to get in, but you won't get hired for a job if the entirety of your experience is limited to music and you, like Matt says, don't really, can't really discern the difference between music and sound design. Like what's, what's useful besides the resume? So like those videos where people will replace the sound design with their own sound design, do, are those helpful for you? Yeah, uh, they, they are absolutely helpful and it's even more helpful if you've gone as far as to set up a WISE project, download a game like Limbo, you can pull down Limbo and you can pull down Limbo WISE project, you can do a sound replacement within WISE with your own assets, you can send me a video, you know, just saying, here's my system, here's how I set it up, these are the assets I created. If you have done all that work, then you, you, you maybe your sounds aren't stellar, maybe the mix isn't 100%, but, but you get it, man. You've, you've set up the system, you've done the implementation, and that puts you way ahead of everyone else that I'm talking to right now. So, to be clear, what Jason is saying is, if you send him, a, how awesome would this be? This has only happened to me maybe twice. Uh, they send you a uh, executable, and it's a it's a wise project inside of a Unity project, and it's just a shitty game. It's just like some like random like block 3D first person shooter experience or something like that. But all the sounds are original, and I can interact with it, and I can go in there, and I can play it, and I can experience the interactions. I can experience the sound design. I can share it with other people, the rest of the team, we can play it. Like, that's so much better, right? Yeah, yeah, and, and Unity provides you, I think, the Cube demo, just yeah. straight out of the box. You can do the WISE integration yourself, you can put the sounds in there, and if somebody were sending me something like that, like, we're talking, I'm definitely gonna call you. Would you hire anybody who didn't have any implementation? In <sighs> I don't think I could. I don't think I could, just because um, implementation is, eh, at least half, if not, if not more. Like we're, our, our, we have this huge library of sounds that are already good and already match the brand of the game that we're working on that we can pull from. We try to do a lot of original recording, recording, but we're in the crunch and moving fast. It's easier just to pull from the library that we already have and put it into the game. So, eighty percent of our job is technical, probably. Stan, it's not that common for us to have to do the imp implementation. I mean, I'm I'm happy to do it. And I I'm grateful when I get the opportunity to do it, but. It's not that common, but there's. Yeah. But you need you need to know how it's how the music's going to work in an interactive yeah. system. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I tell people that want to start doing music for games that most of us get into the job uh, by doing something else. Like I started out doing voice editing and then sound design, and most of the composers that I know in games they are that's how they start. And it's not because it's because they're related. Yeah, it's, it's not because like oh, I did this crappy job first and then I got the good one. It's actually like, no, these they are similar and they're related and it's a part of understanding. And the things that you learn as a sound designer are very applicable to a video game sound composition. That's true. But also there, there are just many more openings for right. entry-level sound designers or editors, voice editors. And, and once you have your foot in the door, you can say, hey, I can do music for that thing if you need it. And that often leads to something.